Yo, what's going on guys? Welcome back to another video on the channel. In today's video, I want to go ahead and update you guys on the swing trades that I am still holding on NVIDIA, Roku, and Goldman Sachs. We're going to go ahead and give you some updated technicals on these positions, give you an update on the current P&L of all three of these positions, and share with you guys why I continue to hold these, even though I have already been up 100% on some of these positions. The market, these positions have at no time given me any signals that we are weakening. And until I see that signal intraday, until I start to see that crack on the overall market, I will continue to hold these positions with plenty of time on the contracts. So let's go ahead and review these. Let's look at why I continue to hold these. Let's do a little bit of analysis as well on the overall market and get a good idea of what we can expect into the close of this week. So with that said, if you guys enjoy this video after watching it, press that like button, subscribe to the channel, and most important, make sure to come hang out in the pre-market live streams, guys, every single morning, starting at 8 a.m. Eastern time. We go over the stocks that I'm watching. We go over some market news, some market technicals. It's a great way to prepare for your morning. All right, guys, so let's go ahead and start this video off with a very quick analysis of the S&P 500, how we were able to spot this bottom and these stocks that we're going to go over, the swing trades that I chose to go ahead and take advantage of this market move higher, right? So if I personally believe that the market is going to go higher, I want to go ahead and look for some specific stocks that I think have sold off that will go ahead and move higher with the overall market. That's why I've chosen stocks like Roku, NVIDIA, and Goldman Sachs. We'll go over those swings in just a second. So on the ES, if you've seen my videos before, you probably already know this. If you are new to the channel and have not seen why I believe the market has moved higher, here it is very quickly. Downtrend. We went ahead and we broke that downtrend on the 14th of October. Uh, that is last week. 14th of October, very nice push higher through that downtrend. Not only did we get the downtrend breakout, we got above the 50 SMA on the ES, on the S&P 500. We also held above it on top of that. Very nice inverse head and shoulders on the market. You guys can see left shoulder, head, right shoulder. An inverse head and shoulders is a bottoming formation. And after I saw the downtrend break, the inverse head and shoulders, the move off the 100 SMA and above the 50 SMA, at that point, guys, there is nothing else you could ask for to try to take advantage of a move higher. If you cannot trust the market after seeing a reversal pattern like that, then you just simply are too scared to go ahead and take some positions. And maybe that's a matter of either scaling down or just trusting your analysis and going into positions with proper risk management and proper risk to reward. At that point, guys, there was nothing else that was in my head besides the technicals. I focused away from any emotions in the market. I didn't focus on what CNBC was saying, you know, what's going on with inflation, what's going on with, uh, you know, with uh, tapering. I saw the technical analysis, I trusted it, and it has worked out beautifully here over the last three to four days. So I like this. Of course, me trusting this analysis is short to medium term. Of course, things can change in the future. I'm not saying that the market has bottomed you know, over the next three to four years. I'm thinking in the short term, in the next, say, one to two months, I think the market has definitely found its temporary bottom here at around 42.70, 42.80. And what happens from here, I'm not quite sure. We could be choppy, we can move down a little bit, but I just do not believe that we are going to go ahead and break down below these previous lows. So after seeing this reversal pattern, I went ahead and took some positions thinking that we would have more upside, and that is what I wanna go ahead and update you today. So NVIDIA, Roku, Goldman Sachs, let's go ahead and review those positions and talk a little bit about the technicals that I'm looking at on those plays. All right, guys, so on your screen, this is the daily chart on NVIDIA, right? And the first thing you're gonna see is the very nice uptrend that held here back in October 5th. So we started to move off that, you know, that uptrend didn't catch the exact bottom, and there is no reason to try to catch the exact bottom, right? We got a very nice confirmation off that little bounce on the daily chart, and we went ahead and started to move higher. When I saw the market break through that downtrend on the ES and the inverse head and shoulders on the 14th of October, that was my, that was my time when on the 14th of October, I knew, okay, 
This is my opportunity. I need to be opportunistic here. I need to go ahead and find some positions that I want to get into here to start looking for upside on the market. NVIDIA was my choice here. That was the position that I went ahead and got into. So on the 14th of October, I got into NVIDIA. I'll go ahead and pull it up here, guys. You probably already know this, but if not, NVIDIA, November 19th, 2.15 call for $8.20. Went ahead and got into this with the idea of swing trading it. That is why I took November 19th contracts. I wanted to give myself time for a multiple day move. I was not just looking for one day. I wasn't looking to scalp this. I was looking to try to take advantage of the market move higher because in my personal belief, I thought the market was gonna move higher and that is why I went ahead and took this position on Nvidia. So with this move higher, very nice. 14th, got into it here. Let's go ahead and break this down into a little bit of a shorter time frame to give you an idea of why I am still holding this, right? So some people may ask, you know, why are you still holding it? Why don't you take your profits? But I wanna show you guys on Nvidia and also on the overall market, there has not been any cracks in the technicals over the last four days. In my opinion, there has nothing been shown intraday to make me believe that NVIDIA is losing steam here. So if I go into, let's say, the five minute over the last five days, here is the last five days on NVIDIA. So I went ahead and got into NVIDIA back here on Thursday. The exact entry was back at this pre-market low. I'll go ahead and show it to you once again. You guys can see back here, uh, the pre-market low was around 212. And if you look at this, that is right here around 212. That was our entry on this pre-market hold. Not really that uh, that concerned about the entry, right? My overall idea was very large. It was macro here. It was a bigger market move to the upside. Is my entry that important on a play like that? Of course, it's not very important. It'd be nice to have a great entry, which it looks like we did. But even if I opened it here later in the day, even if I opened it end of Thursday, uh, we would still be up nicely on this position. So Thursday, great day. There was nothing on Thursday to signal that I should get out of this. Next, we can look at Friday. Friday, flat day, held important levels. If you guys see, if we look at Thursday to Friday, you can see that on Friday, look at where NVIDIA held up, right? So there is some lows here on Friday. If we zoom in, you can see these lows that came in on Friday. Where did it hold? It held the previous highs from the previous day. So right there, a very nice hold of previous highs on NVIDIA from Thursday, moved back, saw it hold, no reason to get out. Why would you get out if this continues to hold previous day highs? So previous day highs right there, held it beautifully, moved into this week Monday. You guys can see Monday, pre-market pulled right back to that level once again. Beautiful pullback to that previous level, huge push off of it. After seeing that, I knew I was in the driver's seat on this position. Very nice hold, pushing higher. And today, again, just a pretty nice consolidation day. Uh, market didn't do much today. You know, we sort of hold these 220 lows um, and we stayed pretty sideways. So no reason to get out of this with November 19th contracts, guys. The theta is very small on these positions. The delta is offsetting. So we're gonna be able to be profitable as long as Nvidia starts to move higher. I'll go ahead and once again, pop up the PL for this position for you guys to see. That is where I am currently standing on these positions as of today, which is October 19th at around 5.18 p.m. Eastern time. If I look forward, if I look to the upside, if you're into this position with me, here are some levels that I'm a little bit concerned about. So the first one is 225. So I'm gonna go ahead and pull this out to a little bit more time. The first, the first uh, resistance level that I could foresee here is 225. So that is this previous high right here. So I'm definitely going to be watching 225 on NVIDIA to potentially take maybe one contract off the table here on NVIDIA. So 225, as we move forward, keep an eye on that level. After 225, you're just gonna wanna continue to watch these previous highs. So 226.84, and then really, it's just about all time highs back at 230. So if we start to push into 225, 226, get through that, then 230 all time high was defi is definitely on my radar here to look to see if we can get to. Until Nvidia shows me weakness here, I am going to continue to trust this trade. I think that is a very big thing. If you guys are struggling with holding winners, make sure you are looking at intraday levels. Make sure you're watching previous day levels, previous levels on the charts, on the hourly chart, on the four hour. As long as they're holding with time, if you have time on your contracts, there is no reason to get out. 
Maybe you give back a few hundred dollars. Maybe you give back 10, 20%. But would you rather give back 10, 20% or would you rather stay a little bit patient here as the market continues higher and see if this thing can continue to push? In my opinion, yes, that is my style. I would rather hold this. I'd rather see Nvidia bite me a little bit, maybe 10, 20%. I'd still take profits. I'd rather see that happen than me get out of this trade foolishly when there's no sign of weakness and miss another move higher here on Nvidia. That's the update on Nvidia, guys. That's my trade. Let's go ahead and get into the next one, which is on Goldman Goldman Sachs. All right, guys, daily chart Goldman Sachs. And of course, this is the beautiful bull flag that we were able to catch here on this position. I'll go ahead and pull it up. Right now, I have sold two of my four contracts on Goldman Sachs. So I am still holding half of my original position. I'll go ahead and set, I'll go ahead and pull up the orders for entries and exits and my total PL as it stands right now. So Goldman Sachs went ahead got into this i will pull it up here on the screen for you to see in the discord right here on the 15th goldman sachs november 19th 420 call for four dollars i got into i went ahead and added some to that as well there's your update on goldman sachs very nice flag breakout so we got in there on the 15th after earnings so this was a very nice earnings continuation play didn't put didn't play it for earnings waited after earnings and played the continuation on earnings, we saw a very strong report. We saw strong reports across all banks, and we saw that very nice move on the financials, the XLF. So we got in early on the four, on the 15th, right in the morning, looking for that continuation. Goldman Sachs went ahead, broke this flag, very nice flag at previous support here at 373. If earnings was not coming, I probably would have looked to get in Goldman a little earlier, but I didn't have that much interest of playing into earnings. So I just went ahead and play the continuation and that is just a fact or that is just another reason another proof why you don't need to play earnings you can just play the continuation so last two days very nice started to take some profits on this thing yesterday when i started to think it was starting to lose a little bit of steam i'll show you why today down on the position unfortunately but overall i'll make sure to show you guys i popped up the pnl earlier uh, i'll pop it up once again for you uh very nice still very profitable we'll see what happens with these last two contracts so if i zoom in and show you guys some levels that i am watching here and a reason why i'm still slightly bullish on this for potential upside the first reason is right here on the hourly chart and that is this hold at uh this is right around 410 now why 410 the reason i say that is you guys can see these previous lows from back in august and then you have this previous high right here back in august as well mid august that's right around this 410 level right here so if i draw this green box i'm gonna go ahead and delete this downtrend to clean this up if I draw this green box here, this little demand zone that I believe has formed right there, you guys can see if I go ahead and zoom into today's price action, over the last two days, we have gotten a very nice hold there at this previous 410 level. So the 410 level has held true, and as long as that holds, I'm gonna continue to hold this position. I have November contracts. I don't need to worry about the expiration. I have time on the position. And if I see this thing holds 410, if I see banks start to heat up again and we start to move higher, it's going to be a very nice hold here at 410 and definitely for some potential upside. As of right now, I think if we get one more leg higher on Goldman Sachs, I think you see all-time highs here. So all-time highs right around 420. That is my target for this position. I know it's a little bit advantageous uh, back at 420, but I really do love this hold that we have seen over the last two days. And if we get this hold here at 410, I don't think it's too far off to say that Goldman Sachs comes back here to 420. So very nice trade again, bull flag breakout. You guys have seen this on the channel, continuously holding it, just giving you an update. If you are in this position with me, there is your update on Goldman Sachs. Finally, Roku. Roku, a, uh, a swing trade that I am in as well. Uh, here is the daily chart. I'm going to go ahead and find the position for you here, guys. All right, guys. So here it is for you. 1014 got into some November 19th Roku 400 calls. Now, I paid $3.95 for this trade. The reason why I went out of the money a little bit further than I usually would and went pretty cheap on the contract is because I have plans as of right now to hold this position through earnings. Now, you may go click off the video because I said that, 
but let me go ahead and walk you through why I want to hold through hold this through earnings and why I can afford to take a loss here if I am incorrect. I want to go ahead and see if I can catch a very large bounce here on Roku. This is probably the one and only earnings play that I am willing to take here into this earnings season. So you can see Roku 400 call November 19th got in there on the 14th of uh, uh, the 14th of October. Why did I get into Roku on the 14th of October? That is back here, uh, right here on this red day. First reason, SPY, nice move, right? Nice move. I thought the market was bottoming. I wanted to get into a position that I thought had a lot of upside. One of them was Roku. I've been watching Roku for a very long time, and I liked this pullback. This was a 40% pullback off the high. So from 490 to the lows, that is a 40% pullback on Roku. I loved the hold here that we saw at 295. This is an incredible hold at previous lows. One, two, three. Since that hold, since the break through the 20 SMA on Roku, and as we saw it start to grind on the 20 SMA, I'll zoom in for you. When we started to see Roku hold the 20 SMA and push higher, this day here engulfing this previous action, uh, I'll go ahead and zoom in in a second. And on the day prior after that, I went ahead and entered this position. I started to see the S&P push higher and I said, okay, this is my opportunity. I want to take a good risk to reward trade. My risk is back down to the lows. My reward is very large if this works out. Of course, it may not. But if I have proper risk to reward, it's a trade I'm willing to take. So I took it on the 14th. I love the break yesterday above 50 SMA. Incredible on that breakout. Very nice for the contracts. Today, a little bit flat, but no reason to sell in my opinion. If I go into the five-day, uh, let me go into the five-day, five-minute for you to see. Let's go ahead and zoom out here over the last five days. So on the 14th, that was on Thursday. That was right here. This is the day I got into it after pushing above the 20 SMA. Got into it here. A little bit of a weekday yesterday. However, I'll show you why I continue to hold it. Uh, you guys can see a very nice bounce off previous lows here, right here. Very nice bounce off previous lows. Yes, uh, Monday, yesterday, huge move. Awesome day for Roku. And today, nothing really showing me to get out, right? We got the big push, but we definitely held below low of day. This was a low of day. Held below that low of day. A little bit of consolidation with November 19th contracts. I don't see any reason to get out of this. So this is my dark horse. I'm going to hold through earnings. The reason why 40% off its highs. I like taking earnings plays only if they are very heavy off their highs. I will not take an earnings play if the stock is at all time highs. That is, I think, in my opinion, a little bit hard to go ahead and trade because there's perfection priced into it. In my opinion, I either catch an earnings run up on Roku, which is on November 4th, or I go ahead and play this through earnings and see if we can get this move back towards the high. So that's my third trade. A little bit speculative, but I think with the risk to reward that I have, it is a good trade for me for my personal portfolio. So that's the update, guys. Goldman Sachs, NVIDIA, Roku. Let's go ahead and wrap up this video. All right, guys. So that's going to be it for today's video. I hope you did enjoy it. Make sure to go ahead and press that like button before you head out. Subscribe to the channel if you want to see more videos. Come hang out in the pre-market live stream. And before I leave, if you are still here, make sure to follow my Instagram because coming up on Thursday of this week, you guys probably know Matt Diamond, another very awesome guy here on YouTube. Great guy. Talk to him about trading a lot. We have a little bit of different styles, and I thought that that would be a great opportunity to jump on his Instagram live that he does. So if you guys want to see that, follow Matt Diamond on Instagram. You guys can go ahead and catch the live stream that we are going to do on Thursday at 12 p.m. Eastern. So with that said, make sure to go ahead and check that out. Hopefully see you guys in the next video. Hope you guys have a great rest of your day. Peace out.